I'm Ben Bomber. I'm an assistant professor in the Statistical and Data Sciences program at Smith College, and I'll be your instructor for this course on correlation and regression. In the previous courses, you've learned how to describe the distribution of a single variable. This is useful, but in many cases what we are more interested in is understanding the relationship between two variables. In particular, in this course, you will learn techniques for characterizing and quantifying the relationships between two numeric variables. In a statistical model, we generally have one, or one variable that is the output and one or more variables that are the inputs. We will refer to the output variable as the response and will denote it with the letter y. In other disciplines or contexts, you may hear this quantity called the dependent variable. More generally, the response variable is a quantity that we think might be related to the input or explanatory variable in some way. We typically denote any explanatory variables with the letter x. In this course, we will have a single explanatory variable, but in the next course, we will have several. In other fields, these can be called independent or predictor variables. Just as you learn to visualize the distribution of one variable with a histogram or density plot, statisticians have developed a commonly used framework for visualizing the relationship between two numer numeric variables, the scatter plot. The scatter plot has been called the most generally useful invention in the history of statistical graphics. It is a simple, two-dimensional plot in which the two coordinates of each dot represent the value of one variable measured on a single observation. By convention, we always put the response variable on the vertical or y-axis and the explanatory variable on the horizontal or x-axis. In ggplot, we bind the x and y aesthetics to our explanatory and response variables and then use the geom point function to actually draw the points. Here, we can see a scatter plot of the total length of a possum's body as a function of the length of its tail. Note that the axes have been labeled with the names of the variables automatically. For clarity, it is important to give your axes human readable labels. We can do that with the scale x continuous and scale y continuous functions. Since you already know how a box plot can illustrate the relationship between a numerical response variable and a categorical explanatory variable. It may be helpful to think of a scatter plot as a generalization of side-by-side -side box plots. We can connect these ideas by discretizing our explanatory variable. This can be achieved in R using the cut function, which takes a numeric vector and chops it into discrete chunks. The breaks argument specifies the number of chunks. Here, we use five breaks to separate the possums into five groups based on their tail length. Finally, we change to geom box plot to make the boxes. Note how the median body length increases as the tail length increases across the five groups. Now it's time for you to get some practice making scatter plots.